Hello everyone, this is Shoahs with the Aerial Heights Gaming Community, and today I'm going to show you something very special. This is a special multi-part video series I am making documenting all of the Star Citizen ship companies in the game. There are many ships in Star Citizen, different looks, different uh, jobs that they perform, different armaments, and they're all made by specific companies. These companies have different traits for the design and look of their vessels, what they're meant to do, and how customizable they are, or how sturdy they are, or how big they are. So I wanted to go through these company by company and show off the vessels they make and what the company stands for. And through this video you can kind of see where the different companies in Star Citizen will go as more and more ships come out and the different kinds of ships and designs that they may follow when they come out. Now we're going to be covering two companies in this video, the MISC Company and Drake Interplanetary. The MISC Company, which is an acronym for the Musashi Industrial and Starflight Concern, a company that specializes in middle-of-the-road, long-haul transport cargo ships. The ships are designed with modular structures, they are easily customizable, and at the moment they only have two ships, the Freelancer and the Starfarer at the time of this video. If for all of you people who are concerned with lore, it is also important to note that the MISC company is also the only company in the Star Citizen universe that has attempted to merge with an alien company. Uh, from what I understand, that wasn't very successful. The more popular of their only two vessels is, of course, the Freelancer, which you can see here. It is a very popular mercantile and cargo vessel. It's very fast. It has it has a it is decently armored, as you can see, many missiles, the nice turrets, the rear turret on the back. It can hold 20 tons of cargo, and it has room for 10 upgrade spots, uh, upgrade slots. Not only is this a very good mercantile ship that you can pretty much, you know, trim and customize to whatever specific job you want, whether it's deep space or uh, more cargo if you're flying through safe parts of space, versus more fuel or more armor if you're going through the more unsavory parts of space. The speed and maneuverability of the vessel have made it a very popular, dedicated exploration vessel. It can go out and stay out for a long time. It's got a decent amount of cargo space. So if you're going out into the unknown parts of space where anything can happen, it's got the weapons to get you out, it's got the speed to get you out, and it's got the cargo space for some goodies you pick up along the way. The Starfarer is the lar second, I'm sorry, third largest vessel in Star Citizen at the moment. The Bengal being largest at a kilometer long, and the Idris Corvette, made by Aegis, if I'm not mistaken, at 140 meters, the Starfarer comes in at 90. It is a two-person tanker vessel. It carries mostly liquid um, cargo. It is a tanker, and it is also important to note that it is the humanity's standard tanker, and the base model that you purchase does not come with special equipment. But if you purchase this special equipment, it can actually be turned into a mobile refinery for fuel. It's mostly used by pilots who are going to refineries and buying fuel and then taking the fuel and selling it at a profit somewhere else. But if you buy special equipment, you can take it to areas of space that are high in hydrogen or some other chemical compounds that will be later dictated. And you can make your own fuel if you have the time. Um, I'm assuming that it'll probably take a little while or there'll be some kind of mechanic involved. And you can sell your the fuel that you literally make. It is also can be equipped with uh, the ability to refuel in flight, meaning that this thing can be like a mobile tow truck. It can go out and you can sell fuel to ships that are stuck. And it will also be very important if you're rolling in very large groups, like a pirate convoy or a mercenary convoy, or even a large group of explorers going out into very hazardous parts of space to salvage or even just fight uh, enemy aliens or pirates or whatever you want to fight, it will be important to have one of these because that means that you don't have to go all the way back to base damaged and cut up and with less ammo and less guns and you can just come back to this thing and refuel your ships. Um, as you can see from the concept art, the it looks like there's a flat hull with the cockpit above and it probably in that hull right there is where there'll be things like crew quarters and um, storage, personal storage space, like that one little area on the Freelancer uh, where you can store some cargo and then there's the main cargo hold through the door. 
This looks like it can be customized where you can put some different rooms in it. I don't know. None of this is confirmed. But in this other picture, you can clearly see that there are these large containers on the back end, which normally was vacant space. And it looks like these, excuse me again, it looks like this is where you'll be holding uh, liquid cargo. Uh, these massive containers can be, the way they look, they can be disconnected and connected at will to be easily moved in and out of place and hooked up to facilities or are brought into port, you know, by maybe uh, an escort ship of some kind or a tow ship. Maybe that's not confirmed. This is just me thinking about it. But it looks very cool in that you can kind of just plop them on, almost like Christmas ornaments, and you can plop on different combinations of what you want. Because not only can it carry fuel, but it can also carry liquid food stuff, which I pretty much surmise as either liquid food paste or water. More importantly, uh, water or coolant. Because, again, in Star Citizen, the plan that they want to go with is that space stations and planets have NPCs that are ne that can be happy and they need food and water. And if you starve them or food and water, they'll start to die and companies will go bankrupt and colonies will die because all their workers are dead. So budding colonies out in the further parts of space or small stations that are kind of building up will need food and water so you can make money. Uh, filling up each of these tanks with things like maybe a coolant of some kind that ships or computers will need or stations will need, liquid fuel for vessels, and then water, which you can then all sell to different people at different times. And you can just kind of flip-flop these containers around as you need them. Uh, the one thing I want to bring up is special for the Misk Company. At $34 million, we will unlock a new hull for the Misk Company. Now, hulls will change the shape of your ship. It will either... Um, the most obvious effect this will have is it will either make your ship easier or harder to de detect if you're trying to be stealth. The larger a ship is and the more energy it's putting off, uh, or the more electronics it's got running and the in the in the more the engines are opened up the further away you can be detected if the hull is smaller or is is shaped in a way that kind of like stealth vessels are where there's lots of angles and it can throw off uh, detection methods you can get around without being detected and we've unlocked a special hull at 34 million dollars we haven't unlocked yet at the time of this video we're only halfway there the D hull the D hull is a the class D hull is a hull designed for smugglers. The hull is thicker with uh, and it's harder for scans to get through the hold, so people can't tell what you're carrying. This means that you can turn your freelancer or even your starfarer into smuggler vessels, making it harder for port authorities to see that you're carrying illicit goods. So the idea of turning the Starfarer, this massive tanker, into something akin to an illegal trading uh, vessel is kind of a cool idea. The only other hull that I know of is the G hull. The G hull, I do not think, is available for uh, civilian purchase, but that could be changed at any time. It is a military hull. It is a heavily armored hull that is used by the UEE. So maybe you'll see it in the Squadron 42 campaign. In the original Wing Commander, you had to escort uh, transport sometimes, so maybe you'll see it there. You'll probably also see it just moving around in UEE space. So guys, if you want a special Starfarer with, that's armored and can take more of a punishment, then you can go out and steal one, but be warned, it's probably under UEE contract, under military contract and guard, but if you can take it, by all means, go ahead. You'll have an armored Starfarer that can take a lot more punishment. And on that note, the Starfarer is, does come uh, pretty decently armed. It's got a large shield. Uh, the top turret on it looks very large and looks like it can do some damage. However, if you're going through the more unsavory parts of the galaxy, I would probably recommend that the Starfarer have an escort of some type. Now, the Misk company as a whole likes their modular designs. It kind of likes that... If you look at both the Starfarer and the Freelancer, they kind of have that bulbous, rounded hole at the front, uh, rounded cockpit at the front. 
and they both have twin guns on either side of the hull. Now, will all the misc vessels have that? I'm not sure, but that's so far just a little, a little something that I've noticed. But that could break. They come out. They could come out with a vessel that looks completely different. But right now, that's kind of similar uh, aspects that the ships share. Now onto Drake Interplanetary. The company is a producer of cheap, sturdy vessels that are very popular among pirates, mercenaries, and privateers. Uh, many people know this. Its reputation among the unsavory elements of the galaxy is legendary, and a lot of people accuse the company that they know this. The company says they're a legitimate company and that, the popula and that they make militia vessels that are cheap, that small systems without the money of the UEE can buy sturdy, nice vessels to defend themselves with, whereas other vessels may be made by Anvil or Aegis are out of their price range. However, people, uh, they can't really defend themselves on this point very good, considering that the names of the ships that they market, such as the Cutlass and the Caterpillar, as well as the Marauder, the Buccaneer, and the Privateer. So, they claim to be a legitimate company that make these vessels for search and rescue op operations, militia use, and um, salvaging, However, they name them things like Cutlass, Marauder, Buccaneer. So, it's clear that Drake Interplanetary knows what's going on. They know who their biggest customers are, and they're catering to them. The Cutlass, which is probably the most iconic vessel made by Drake at the moment, mostly due in the Star Citizen community at the time of this video, because the Cutlass has been available for a very long time, but it is the only original vessel available at the moment that isn't at the hangar, it isn't in the hangar because it gets its own hangar. It gets a special asteroid hangar. It's a small ship designed for point defense. It is popular among militias and small uh, law groups or pirates. I'm going to take a sip real quick. It has a 10-ton cargo hold, which isn't much, but it's pretty big for its size. And the, and the very large gun on the top makes it uh, gives it the ability to take on larger vessels... Uh, as, as well as small fighters that the other guns on it can take on. Uh, it can also harass transport ships. It's very upgradable with 12 slot upgrades. It's two more than the Freelancer, but again, it's very, it has the ability to harass transport vessels. These things are infamous, known, known in pirate factions to travel in packs and harass star lanes. It is also possible to upgrade them to uh, couple on to up, uh, if you have a caterpillar or a starfare or, or something that's been upgraded to be like a mobile supply base, uh, these things can be easily converted to hook up to those and be resupplied and refueled in flight and then go out and cause more damage. And instead of having to go back to a station or asteroid base. Now, speaking of the caterpillar, that's their other. Uh, the other vessel by Drake at the moment is the Caterpillar Transport. It's an armored transport. It is known throughout the galaxy as the Constellations or sometimes the Freelancer's Evil Twin. Either way, it's the Evil Twin. It can only hold 20 tons of cargo, which seems a bit low compared to that it's similar to the size of the, of the Constellation, which can hold 30 tons. And it also has a larger crew of five, but it's more armored and it has uh, more turrets on it, more guns. This thing is basically, if you're a cargo transport uh, type of pilot, if you're using this thing, this is basically the armored car of the Star Citizen universe. However, if you're a pirate, this is typically the vessel that your cutlasses or your other small vessels will go up to and will They'll get the cargo out of whatever ships they take or whatever ships they destroy. They'll go take the cargo and they'll bring it back to your Caterpillar and load it up there. Or your Caterpillar will carry supplies. And it being such a heavily armored vessel, or appears to be such a heavily armored vessel, that it can also... Uh, it looks like it can be used as a mobile like bunker, a mobile fire base. Something that can come in with a lot of guns and take a lot of hits that a lot of the enemy will concentrate on while your little fighters come in from behind and take them out. <coughs> oh, sorry about that. Now, the only other ship that Drake has, which there's no concept art or data for this at the moment, but is the Herald. It is a information runner vessel. At the moment, exactly how much 
or even what information running is in the Star Citizen universe hasn't been really fleshed out to my personal knowledge. Um, this kind of came out of nowhere when it was on uh, the uh, vote for the next ship that we design if we hit our next stretch goal. It is a small, very fast vessel with an armored computer core shielded from EMP weapons and is heavily encrypted, so it's very hard to break into. The vessel is suited to transporting messages, uh, information such as messages, money ledgers, and names of those who qualify for citizenship. Now, <clears throat> the only way to qualify for citizenship in Star Citizen is to complete the military campaign. If you don't do that, you don't get citizenship, which means that... It, well, if you get citizenship, you can do a lot more. You have access to more places in UEE space. You have access to more equipment in UEE space. Special discounts and different um, small outposts around will take you in where they won't take anyone else in. Plus whatever else little bonuses that they come up with along the way. Now, this looks like it would be the ideal way for a pirate or someone who doesn't want to do the campaign. If you can somehow... Take out an information runner that you know is going to UEE space and carries um, important information and then crack the heavily encrypted hull. In my personal opinion, this may be a way for you to get your character citizenship without having to complete the campaign. Now, is this confirmed? Is this even possible? Uh, I have no idea. None of this is confirmed. This is all personal opinion. It is my personal opinion that this may be a way for an unsavory pirate or freelancer character to get citizenship without having to participate in military action because in other um, uh, news announcements and on the 24-hour live stream that happened way back there was a segment where they were talking about how um, you need a license to pilot larger vessels like the uh, the Starfarer or the Idris Corvette and it's Im it's impossible for pirates to illegally obtain this these licenses so it, I can only guess that maybe just maybe obtaining citizenship illegally will be can be done through these means I, I don't know anything about that that's personal at the moment but again that's my personal opinion and if it is that'd be really really cool and this and this provides a new aspect on star citizen gameplay that we haven't seen the idea of of in um of intercepting important messages money ledgers where you can cash in UEE funds for you know from their bank accounts and stuff like that you'll get a lot of heat on you but if you can pull it off this looks like these will be very primary targets these things maybe even more of a target than large transport vessels. Information is power, and it looks like the Herald is going to be able to hold a lot of it. And to finally finish off, the really the only company pattern that you see with Drake is there seems to be... <coughs> excuse me. A twin engine design that you can see with the Cutlass and the Caterpillar both. It seems that the company is fond of putting two engines on the far side of the vessel. Now, the description of the Herald says it has a singular engine, so this pattern may break. The vessels are also armored, and the vessels are also designed to stand and fight, which, again, is broken because of the Herald. The Caterpillar and the Cutlass, if you're flying those, you're flying an armored vessel that when when things hit the fan, when, when shit hits the fan, when you get attacked, if you're flying Drake, you are flying a vessel designed to stand and fight, not a vessel that can run and maneuver like the Freelancer. That's what you're, That's what the idea is. So if you're a very PvP-centric or very aggressive fighter, Drake may be the company for you. But again, the Herald breaks all these molds. So if, again, if, if you want the same kind of quality, if you like Drake and you like what they can give you, and you want something that's fast and does something completely different than the Herald is for you. It is kind of weird to see the Herald on the Drake uh, rolls. I would figure that... I would have figured that maybe Misk uh, or even one of the other companies, maybe even Robert Space Industries, would have got this ship. But it's... <coughs> it may change, but it is, in my personal opinion, kind of odd that the Herald was designed by the Drake Company. But again, that's all for this video. Uh, there are many more uh, companies to come, and I'll be going—I'll uh, be going over all of them in more videos. But until then, fly safe, everyone.